at this point then allow me to welcome Commissioner uh, Professor Mario Mutili, who is a Commissioner at Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, uh, to come and make her remarks. And of course I have to pass the apologies from the chairperson, Rosie Mugeta. Karim Zan, This morning, I'm happy to join this distinguished group of people to talk about the job and particularly how the media practitioners that work together with other state actors, non-state actors, to ensure that mental health and well-being is not just a global priority, a priority for us as a nation and a priority in the county government. <clears throat> this meeting comes just a few days after October 10 that marked the celebration of mental health and well-being globally. We have been told that one, approximately one of every, out of every four Kenyans experience mental health challenges in their lifetime. We also know about 40% of inpatients in our different health facilities struggle with mental health. We also know that 75% of Kenyans are not able to access mental health care. We are happy to note <coughs> that mental health in the amendment of the Act included new definitions of mental health, such as substance abuse, because in the past, we just thought of depression, bipolar, schizo, and others as mental health challenges. But now, we want to appreciate the work that was done by many actors, including our own uh, Senator Kasanga, and many others, including these new parameters. The work is not finished because up to now in Kenya, suicide is a criminal. Uh, it is criminal. Meaning that if you try to kill yourself and you don't succeed, then the government deals with you. The position of the commission <coughs> is that sick people are taken to hospital, they are not taken to jail. You know and you have heard of recent cases of mental health resulting in suicide, mental health challenges resulting in the suicide. Just last month in September, a poetry student in Langa Langa Secondary School in Nakuru committed suicide after being ordered to shake his head hard there by a teacher. Nobody should lose their lives of their hair. In University, a student committed suicide in March this year after being heartbroken. I have taught for many years and I tell students that there are 50 million Kenyans and 25 million of them are your opposite sex. So if we assume there are 10 million available ones, if one breaks your heart, move on to the other 10 million. <coughs> A student at the United University of Science and Technology, June this year, committed suicide after failing to graduate in the 20th graduation ceremony. And again, degrees are good, but they should not cost you a life. Suicide is not 
just among the older people, because we know in February this year, a standard three people committed suicide after quarreling with the elder sister. We come from homes where we are forever quarreling with our siblings, it is normal, it is healthy, but nobody should commit suicide out of this. Mental illness affects all persons, all ages, from different all communities, all socioeconomic uh, groups in our society. It is important <coughs> to have systems of prevention early identification, assessment, and treatment. My training, I'm a geneticist, and I know that uh, mental health has a genetic predisposition, meaning that all of us face different stressors in life, but the way we deal with them at times is genetically predisposed. Just think of a student who had to cut her hair. That's a small thing to you. But if she were if she was genetically predisposed, it was a big thing to her. We also know that the environment plays a big role. Other than being predisposed, because the environment provides the environment in which this predisposition is exhibited as mental health. We know that <coughs> the Mental Health Amendment Act, which I've talked about, provided a rights-based approach to mental health care, and the Commission recognizes that the right to health, which is provided for in our Constitution, includes every Health. We therefore call upon both the national and county governments to allocate resources so that the goals that were set out in the Amendment Act can be achieved. We appreciate the Mental Health Action Plan 2021-2025 and the Suicide Prevention Strategy 2021-2026. as areas of improvement where mental health can be taken care of. We therefore call upon budgetary allocation to mental health from the current 0.01%, that is 50 cent, 15 cents, you can't even buy a sweet, 15 cents, <coughs> to be increased. to 15% in line with their budget exploration, where a portion, a sizable portion, will be to cater for mental health. <coughs> we call upon advocating for integration collection and reporting of mental health indicators through the Ministry of Health's district health information systems so that we can be able to reach the data gaps. Last but not least, we call upon the criminalization of society. We believe as a commission that this is unconstitutional because, as I had said earlier, see people go to hospital and don't go to jail. The others are appealing to all stakeholders to join hands so that we can work together. I want to talk about, to end, I want to talk about the media. The media plays a big role. Let me see the people from the media. So that as I talk, I can look at history. <laughs> the media plays a large role in terms of establishing 
not just in, not just reporting, but in holding and actually leading national agenda. I remember some years ago, I talked to a media practitioner who was doing pieces from what they call their opinions of people. And I met him and I asked him, tell me, it was just before an election. I asked him, how do you know? Because you say things and later in the week, those things will happen. You write about things and later in the week, those things will happen. So when I met him, I asked him, do you have some premonition? <laughs> because you seem to say things and they actually happen. I said, what happens is that when we write them, people look at them, they actually read them. Meaning that you have power in your hands to influence, not just to report and inform, but also to influence national beats. And that is why the National Commission on Human Rights, and by the way, we are not the Kenya Human Rights Commission. We are the Kenya National, the National, yeah. National Commission. <laughs> that is why we thought we would call them this year so that you can join hands and you can help in setting the agenda so that mental health as a human right is mainstreamed and is well resourced. <laughs> yeah, they are calling upon all of us to champion increased and adequate mental health financing, stigma, fighting stigma and discrimination, and sensitizing the public as advocates for accountability and leadership in mental health. Mental health is particularly close to my heart because I have family members who struggle with mental health. And I know the stigma that goes along with mental health, and I know that people who are living with mental health can live long and productive lives, just like the rest of us who have diabetes and arthritis. I was making two that have arthritis in my leg, foot. So they can live long and productive lives, live lives like everybody else, have families, develop their careers, and contribute to nation building because they also have their rights. I want to thank you for honoring our invitation. You didn't have to, but you did, and we want to thank you. And as a commission, our mantra is our mantra. Happy for water. So when I say happy for water, you say kill our party. And when I say kill our party, you say happy for water. So that's how. Happy for water. Kill our party. Kill our party. Happy for water.